the mysterious artifacts of the Yan people, the Roman city in the Sahara Desert, the remains of a man who had a knife instead of a hand, and much more you will see in this video. Watch the video until the end, it will be interesting. Hi friend, you are on the Kurtop channel. Artifacts of the Yan people the British explorers Theodore and Stray organized an expedition to abandoned Mayan cities in the early 20th century. The guide who led them through the jungle suddenly fell ill and went to another world. Travelers left without a guide had to find their own way. Every day they went around the neighborhood in search of a further way to advance, and one day stumbled upon the walls of an ancient temple. The researchers set up a camp under the walls of the temple, deciding to explore it thoroughly. Taking torches, they went inside the temple, finding a spacious hole decorated with bas reliefs, seeing which Stray immediately noted for himself their great resemblance to Egyptian ones, and he spent a lot of time on expeditions in Africa. Further, they discovered two huge pedestals on which some bizarre geometric elements were located. At first, they were mistaken for statues, but later they realized that these were some mechanisms. They were made of some unknown metal, while everything else else around was made of stone. Next to them lay, as if in a hurry, tools, which upon closer examination turn out to be parts of mechanisms. Researchers have devoted a lot of time to understanding how these unusual objects work, but have not been able to. They only assumed that it was something resembling an engine. But an even more interesting discovery evaded them further. They found a passage littered with a huge stone. Having spent a lot of strings to move it away, they stumbled upon an obstacle from from several of the same stones. Having broken their way with pickaxes, the travelers found themselves in a corridor with very unusual acoustics. It led them to the burial chamber, and then a real miracle evaded them. In the burial sarcophaguses, they found the remains of unusual creatures. The main creature was in the center, its remains wrapped in silk sheets. The head was larger than a human's, with huge eye sockets and a small mouth such that it could hardly speak. Smaller, similar creatures were nearby. Also along the perimeter were tiny sarcophaguses with the remains of embryos or babies already more human-like in appearance. Upon his return to Boston, Stray as he sent the collected artifacts to his acquaintance, Marilyn, whom he considered a specialist in humanoids. Artifacts remained with Marilyn in the collection. Now they can be seen in his museum in England. Roman City in the Sahara for almost a thousand years, the sands of the Sahara Desert have hidden the ancient Roman city of Timgad under them. Even the famous Pompeii can envy its safety. To this day, Timgad is considered the best-preserved city, designed for perpendicular development in accordance with the Roman traditions of urban planning. Timgad was found in 1765 by a research team led by the Scotsman James Bruce, who was looking for the source of the Nile and came across a perfectly preserved Roman city. Then the traveler could not assess the scale of his find. In his diary, he described it as small but full of elegant buildings. During a short excavation, several statues of the emperor Antonius Pius were found, which left no doubt that this was a Roman city. Unfortunately, in London, the description of his trip to Africa was met rather coolly, and he, offended by such a nut attitude towards himself, did not publish anything. And only in 1790, at the insistence of his friend Danes Barrington, the book Travels to the Sources of the Nile in 1768, 1768, 1779, 1770, 1771, 1772, and 1773 was published. However, it was severely criticized by other famous travelers as untrustworthy, and the Senfeld city was forgotten for almost another hundred years. Bruce's research was continued by Lambert Playfair, a British diplomat who read Bruce's work and decided to go in search of the ancient city. Large-scale excavations of the city began in 1881 and continued for about 80 years. A large public library, 14 public baths, a theater with 3,500 seats, an epiphany basilica with a font, a 12-meter triumphal arch and more than 200 mosaics were found. There was a water pipe in the city, which is still in operation. There were public toilets built over special channels through which water always flowed, in general, no worse than in any imperial city. 
In general, Timgat was built in the Roman style down to the smallest detail. It was the real fragment of the great empire that lasted until about 780. Being on the eve of the Atlas Mountains, it had to ensure the safety of the coastal regions from the Berber nomads. Actually, the constant raids of the barbarians devastated the city, and the strongest sandstorm hid it under the sands for almost a thousand years, thereby preserving it from destruction. Scientists have obtained the DNA of ancient people with the help of lice. Macromoleculis are well preserved in the sticky mass that makes up the lane of acts of parasites living in the human hairline. Scientists from the University of Reading, UK, have deciphered the genomes of a 2,000-year-old mummies that were found in the vicinity of the Argentine city of San Juan. Scraps of DNA from mummified people were preserved in the clutches of lice eggs that lived in their hair. The resulting genetic material is well preserved. Thanks to DNA analysis, it was possible to find out how the Indians moved around the continent. In particular, scientists have found that the people from the Ancelta culture whose mummies were studied by scientists, are related to the first groups of Indians who came to South America at the end of the Ice Age. It turned out that the ancestors and closest relatives of these Indians did not live in the Andes, but in the jungle in the north of the Amazon. At the same time, DNA fragments of the Oncovirus MCV were found in the glue of the lice, which in the past apparently spread among ancient people through skin parasites. Previously, scientists have not even tried to look for DNA residues in human hair or animal fur, since they are almost entirely composed of the keratin protein. Usually genetic material can be extracted from bones. As for the aforementioned mummies, they were so fragile that the researchers were not allowed to touch their skeletons, which forced them to go in an unusual way and carefully examine the hair. Roman Gravestone with Rare Epitaph a tombstone of the Roman period, on which an inscription rare for that time in verse, was discovered during archaeological excavations in the southern suburbs of Tauric Chersonesus, at present the territory of Sevastopol, Crimea. Archaeologists are conducting excavations near the territory of the Tauric Chersonese Museum Reserve, on the site of former military units. In the Hellenistic, ancient periods and the Middle Ages, there was a suburb of Chersonese here. In particular, for several centuries there was a cemetery here. The monument itself is interesting, a good example of early Roman funerary sculpture. But it's impossible to say that this has never happened. Similar tombstones have been found in the Chersonese region before. The inscription is another matter. It is interesting because it is poetic. On the tombstone, which is made of Proconesian marble and has survived almost intact, the image of a boy is carved. Below it is an inscription. According to scientists, the work was most likely made by a local sculptor at the end of the 1st 2nd centuries AD. To date, the inscription has been translated, but the research does not end there. The inscription reads, Here lies Mitrodorus, son of Apollonites, farewell. I, a Sally tombstone, was erected by an educator, father, and a nurse, mother. The dialect of the inscription is clearly Ionic and not Doric, a dialect of the ancient Greek language which was spoken not only by the Greeks but also by educated inhabitants of other provinces of the Roman Empire. This also applies to the names of the son and father. Perhaps this family moved Chersonese from one of Milesian colonies, Miletus, a large Greek city on the territory of modern Turkey, whose inhabitants found several colonies in the Black Sea region. Mysterious Adams Bridge Indian archaeologists intend to study in detail the string of shoals between Sri Lanka and India, which Muslims call Adams Bridge and Hindus Ramas Bridge, and answer the question of its origin. According to the Ramayana epic, the ruler Rama ordered the construction of a bridge in order to go to Sri Lanka to fight the demon Ravana, who had kidnapped Sita, the king's beloved. Hindus consider the object sacred. The isthmus also appears in Islamic legends. It was through it that Adam, expelled from paradise, crossed from the island to the mainland and went to Eve. 
In turn, the underwater archaeologist Alec Tripathy believes that the Raymond Bridge is still a man-made object. The isthmus, in his opinion, could be built by representatives of the ancient civilization, which about 4,000 years ago, under the onslaught of the Aryan tribes, was forced to flee from the Hindustan Peninsula to Sri Lanka. Alec Tripathy will lead an underwater expedition of archaeologists that the Indian Council of Historical Research will send this summer to understand the origin of the isthmus. Previous Previously, the work was postponed several times, so in 2005, the project was cancelled due to mass protests of believers and in 2013 due to the threat of a tsunami. Now the Indian authorities went to deepen the Rama Bridge to facilitate navigation, but Hindus, who wake up the majority of the country's population, are protesting against this. Maya frescoes in a private house in Guatemala, during the repair of one of the old private residential buildings, under several layers of plaster, unique colored frescoes of the Exil people were discovered, which is still one of the largest groups of the Maya civilization. Polish archaeologists examined several buildings in the ancient city of Chahol in western Guatemala. The result was an unprecedented array of wall paintings that date back to the colonial period. According to scientists, the frescoes were made from 1520 to 1821 AD. The first of them was accidentally discovered in 2003 by a local resident who started renovating his house. True, until 2008, due to the unstable political situation in the country, scientists could not get access to these finds. For the same reasons, researchers were not allowed into Chakal at all for more than 40 years, only now managed to document the frescoes. Their iconography is unique because it combines elements of the pre-Columbian era with motives brought by Europeans. For the first time, such images were found not in a religious building, but in a residential building. Scientists have carried out iconographic, chemical and radiocarbon analysis of the paintings. Most of them date back to the 17th-18th centuries. Perhaps their appearance was associated with the revival of indigenous religious traditions against the background of the weakening of the Spanish colonial oppression. The frescoes are painted with bright colors and are quite well preserved. The scenes depicted on them are interconnected by a plot. The main characters are musicians and dancers. Scientists pay attention to the fusion of Indian and Spanish traditions which is reflected in the iconography. Thus, the frescoes depict people entirely dressed in European costumes, but they also meet people whose clothes are mixed Indian-Spanish outfits. The same can be said about tools. The largest cities of the Ishil people, Chahol, Nibe and Kotzel, were captured by the Spaniards in the 16th century, but have survived to this day. The local population has largely preserved its traditions and cultural identity. According to scientists, the total number of Mayan descendants today is approximately 8 million people. About 6.2 million of them live in Guatemala. A knife instead of a hand Four years ago, the Langobard necropolis was discovered in northern Italy, apparently dating back to this to 68 AD. The remains of hundreds of people and several animals were found in it. The skeleton of a 40-50 year old man with the right arm amputated to the middle of the forearm attracted particular attention of archaeologists. According to one version, he could have lost a limb as a result of a domestic injury. However, according to another version, given the fact that the Lombard Kingdom participated in numerous wars, a man could lose his arm in one of the battles. However, archaeologists were interested in a fragment of the skeleton of his hand with traces of biomechanical impact. On the bones of the hand, deformations carried prolonged bearing of the prosthesis were clearly visible. And this was confirmed by the teeth of men. Significant wear of the teeth on the right side of the jaw indicated that he often had to use them to fix the prosthesis with straps. The position of the man's skeleton in the burial was noticeably different from the remains of his associates. If the knives and other weapons of the buried lay on the right and left next to them, and the arms were extended along the body, then the disabled person 
person had the right arm bent and lying across the body, while the knife was in place of the amputated wrist. In the same place, archaeologists found a D-shaped buckle and apparently a decade leather fragment. According to scientists, it could be a part of a special cap covering the amputated limb. Obviously, after the amputation, the bone healed quickly, an extremely rare event when there were no antibiotics. Moreover, a man deprived of a part of a limb lived for a long time after the operation, using, moreover, a prosthesis, albeit a primitive one. Weapons and clothing 48,000 years old an international research team from the German Max Planck Institute for Human History, Griffith University in Australia and the Department of Archaeology of the Sri Lankan government has presented evidence for the earliest use of bows and arrows outside of Africa. The study is published in the journal Science Advances. Scientists have studied artifacts aged 45-48 thousand years found in the Fahian Lina cave. It is located in the tropical forests of Sri Lanka. Among the discovered tools, the analyzed revealed bone arrowheads. Until now, the age of the oldest arrows found in Southeast Asia was about 32,000 years. In addition, these weapons are much older than those found in Europe. Only in Africa were more ancient arrows found. Traces preserved on the arrowheads indicate that they were used for hunting. Bone tools with single and double hooks were also found in the cave. Detailed microscopic analysis helped prove that these tools were used for weaving fishing nets and probably for tailoring. This was indicated by microscopic fibers that could be examined on hooks using a modern electron microscope. Clear evidence has also been found for the production of colored pearls by prehistoric people, Langley said. The beads were dyed with ochre. Some artifacts indicate that people at that time already knew the technology for the production of artificial pearls, which were mined with the help of river mollusks. The age of jewelry is about 45,000 years. Their well-established production may indicate that pearls were made for sale, perhaps they were exchanged for other goods. This means that a complex social network could have existed in the tropics of present-day Sri Lanka as early as 45,000 years ago. Rate the video with a thumbs up or down and tell your friends about it. And to everyone who writes a kind comment, I will definitely answer. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!